Hello, this is Kanako Ishiyama, and today I will be doing my first true blind commentary, and this one is going to be on anal an analysis video. Um, it is titled, Taking Amending Fences Too Seriously, by Commander Firebrand from FOB Equestria. Uh, and as I just said, this it will actually be a blind commentary. I have not watched this review Bef until now. And before I do, I want to give my opinions on the episode. Amending Fences is definitely among my top ten favorite episodes, if not top five. The episode was really charming and heartwarming, and I've been a fan of... of I was a fan of My Little Pony Generation 1 back when I was a kid, and I remembered Moon Dancer, so when I found out she was actually in this episode, I was very excited. And I had seen fan arts of a G4 version of Moon Dancer for a while, but it was nice to be able to see her in the series. And I also liked the concept of Twilight um, remembering how terrible she was to her friends in Canterlot in the begin at the very beginning of the series. That's a nice callback to that. Anyway, we'll see what Commander Firebrand thought of the episode. So let's begin. Ah, uh, amending fences. So far, this has been the most well-received episode of Season 5. Everyone and their long-forgotten friends that they just made up with are singing this episode's praises to the high heavens. <laughs> now, I'm here to tell you that I love it too. Yay! As it would be to be a contrarian here, I like to think I have more integrity than that. So, I'm yeah. sure everyone else is set already. This was an episode I never knew I wanted, but once I got it, I wanted it like chocolate. <laughs> Besides the phantom drama? Hey -o! <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Not <laughs> Okay, Spike, while I love your sense of humor and bluntness, glass houses. Yep. Wow. So Twilight decides she needs to talk to her old friends. I can understand her thought process on this. She got so wrapped up in her own life that she forgot some people who were a huge part of it. I mean, I still have friends that I've known for years, like, all throughout childhood, and we haven't spoken in a long time. Yeah, I've been there too. Oh no! He's having a kill attack. Quick, someone show him fan art to stroke his ego. Oh, what happened? Uh, oh, is that show style? Yes, and you may have it when you're done with the review. Sweet. So Twilight goes back to her old home, which is now unoccupied and left untouched since season one. What? Shouldn't she have taken, like, her books with her? Yeah, I... Film? Or at least cleaned up for the next person? Yeah, I wondered that myself. Of course, she did leave in a hurry. Ooh, hiding a detail from the audience. Good. Biting time until a juicy reveal. Can't wait for that. I know I'm being Captain Obvious here, but there's a stronger focus on background ponies this season. And so far, it's being handled pretty well. I do love our main characters, and I love. I guess I didn't remember Twinkle Shine being one of, spend some time with some of the other her friends. And thankfully, it doesn't feel out of place. Instead of having these characters just say a line or two and leave, these characters are given actual identities and personalities. It makes the world feel a little more alive. Yeah, I really grew to like Minuet after seeing this episode, too. Well, be honest, wouldn't you want to get on terms with a huge celebrity that you knew in the past? Hmm? Uh, it's for you. Guy says he knew you from kindergarten. Heard you were an internet celebrity and wants to be friends again. But I'm not a celebrity. Okay, he says he's not a celebrity. Well, fudge. People <laughs> wonder why I don't use Facebook. That's, I guess, that's a good reason.
While I love continuity as much as the next guy and the explanations of bizarre things that have gone on in the background since the show began, that still doesn't explain the clones of Lyra we've seen everywhere. Oh, okay. Already established in the MLP mythos, that could conceivably explain the large amount of clones. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I still, I still thought that changeling was adorable. The one that we saw in Slice of Life. Perhaps since then, changes have slowly been searched for and deported. Whoa, tangents. A strike when you least expect. As the card. Wow. <laughs> so a minuet accidentally drops a guilt bomb on Twilight, which prompts Twilight to apologize. That's one thing I really like about Twilight. Her humility. Even though she's a princess of Equestria, she's not above admitting she makes mistakes or yeah. apologizing for mistakes she's made a long time ago. That sort of earnestness is very admirable and something I try to emulate. He's having a kill attack. Quick, someone show him fan art to stroke his ego. <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> nice. So, Twilight goes back to her old kindergarten class and has a flashback. <laughs> wow, Twilight does sound like a joyless lord. Wow. I've forgotten Tara Strong played him. Do I? Review Firebrand. Oh yeah. Work. Some people have complained that Moon Dancer is a Twilight recolor, and it's true, she is. But I actually like that. You see, there's this epistemological idea called Tabula Rasa. Boo, education. Could someone gag him, please? Sure thing. <laughs> Basic philosophy, Tabula Rasa means blank slate. It's the idea that people are born without inherent traits, and everything they acquire or perceive through their senses is what shapes them into who they are. You know, product of environment, nurture, well, yeah. that kind of jazz. That makes sense. That's how this episode is visually stating that Twilight and Moondancer actually started out as similar ponies, but their life choices set them on paths that developed them in differing directions. Twilight yep. in the direction of princesshood, and Moondancer... Oh! in the direction of a Tolo Hikiko Mori. Freaking weirdo. It was a phase! So Twilight asks how Moondancer uh, got this one. What, 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 what did you say? Moondancer was coming out of her shell, but then retreated back once Twilight I feel like I should probably know who he was talking about, but I didn't understand the name. To be fair, this isn't exactly Twilight's fault. I mean, Nightmare Moon was about to happen, and Celestia would have sent her to Ponyville, and she would have missed the party anyway. Twilight That's true. Twilight can't shoulder all the blame. So Twilight tries to talk to Moon Dancer, but her attempts aren't going very well. <laughs> I loved her being inside the book, though. Do you hear that? I do believe I hear an ironic echo. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, we caught that already. I love this look. It just Me too. You're mine now. Yep. <laughs> Whoa, really? Never ending story style. I want to try this. Uh, Me too. Uh, oh, that ooh, does sound cool. Highlight. Not. Should I have told him that was the Stephanie Meyer version? Uh. Oh might have been good. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was amazing! What? Yeah, that was one of the best comedies I've ever read. Oh, <laughs> good. I'm gonna read the sequels after the review is done. I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare. So Twilight takes it to the next level and tries to bribe Moondancer into spending time. But Queen Shoutout ain't... And that is what? Is anyone else getting an amusing image of Twilight dangling Haycart's method from a fishing pole while Moondancer is trying to grab it? Just me? Eh, okay. Nope. So everyone gets together at a diner and... Yeah. Oh my gosh! This is horrible! Equestria is in danger! Look who it is in the corner! Oh, right. It's Aria Blaze! No, it's not. Well, she's not getting away from it's... me! Um, <laughs> it's Starlight. Look again. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh! <laughs> Silly me, what was I thinking? Aria doesn't you have what? Voice, so she's completely harmless. Oh my oh, god. Oh gosh. So they had the dinner wow. and kinda awkward. I mean, uh, it be awkward but not funny. Yeah, awkward. he should have kept that rifle up. <laughs> if that makes sense. 
then Moon Dancer bails, saying she wants nothing to do with friendship. That's gotta be a huge blow to the Princess of Friendship, and it is. Twy is known to take failure very hard, and it's no different here. She takes it so hard that she can suddenly hallucinate an event she wasn't there for. So, extreme guilt gives you post-cognition? Maybe. Are so, knowledgeable. so Twilight quickly heads back to Ponyville and picks up Pinkie Pie. Yay! Oh, yeah. So we're Twinkle, Shine, and Lyra. You know, I've always wondered about that. These characters were on good enough terms with Cadence that they became her bridesmaids? I wonder how that worked. How'd they actually meet Cadence in the first place? Wait a <sighs> minute. Minuet, Lyra, and Twinkleshine were all friends of Twilight when she was younger, and Cadence was Twilight's constant full sitter. Yep. So it wouldn't be too much to assume that they would probably have met each other at one point and become friends, which eventually developed to a point where Cadence would offer them to become her bridesmaids. Holy crap, it's all connected! Oh dear. library and geeks out over some books she found lying on the ground. Don't you find this a tad suspicious? So Moondancer arrives at a makeup party and is persuaded to at least try it. Moondancer is not happy and lets Twilight know about it. The dialogue and acting here are incredible. It has the perfect balance. You don't believe that Twilight is a bad person, but you also don't believe that Moondancer is wrong for saying these things. Yeah. You believe that Moondancer was sincerely hurt by Twilight, mm -hmm. even though there was no malicious intent. I think now's a good time to talk about catharsis. This was an idea first conceived by Greek philosopher Aristotle. When someone experiences strong emotions or certain emotions that have built up over time, sometimes the mind's first instinct is to repress them, and that in turn affects your personality in negative ways. Then, a triggering event causes the process of releasing, and thereby providing huh. a sort of alleviation from those repressed emotions. And here we have catharsis, that feeling of having the burden of your repressed emotions relieved. Moondancer here went through catharsis. She clearly states that at one point she wanted to be valued, but got hurt as a result and never wanted to be hurt like that again. She repressed her emotions and shut everyone out. Her rant against Twilight really feels like she is releasing strong and pent-up anger and sadness. Mm -hmm. We see Moondancer finally show an emotion other than apathy or disgust, after which she is in a mental state where she is more receptive to Twilight. The scene is slow but effective, and many movements that these characters make contain a large amount of subtleties. Speaking of Twilight, it's important to note that she technically didn't do anything wrong. Twilight didn't know how much value Moondancer put on that party, and there was no way she could have known, yet she still apologizes anyways. A lot of times, especially when you have a lot of influence, you're gonna have to apologize for bad things you didn't intentionally do. Sometimes your smallest actions have huge unforeseen consequences, mm -hmm. and trying to make it right will mean the world to people. You have to fix it because people are affected in big ways by small things, no. and you aren't taking it too seriously. And I'm ready to be sure I never become that way again. So I'll tell me to I like this. He used this song before in another video, but I like this song. Anyway, that was taking the mending fences too seriously, and um this was one a really good analysis video by Commander Firebrand. He hit on a lot of good points, like how um, Twilight had no malicious intent, but it was still understandable why Moondancer took it so hard. And I am going to say that while Twilight has been my favorite character since the beginning, I have noticed her personality going, kind of going downhill since she became a princess. I'm not saying I'm against her becoming a princess, but at the same time, it seems like they just focus more on her being a princess or something and don't focus on her being Twilight as much as they used to. So this episode was a nice breath of fresh air because it showed us the twilight i came to like from the first episode from the first episode onwards so let's hope and we are starting to get more of that back so let's hope they keep it up 
anyway, this is Kanakushiyama, and I hope you enjoyed my commentary, and I will, as usual, I will have a link to the original video for you to see for yourself in the comment section below. Until then, I hope you will tune in for the next, my next video, so take care everyone. Bye!